going on, everybody? It's your buddy. It's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, and you know the deal. You don't see my pretty sexy face, so you know I'm not alone. Guapo, say what's up. All the base of amigos, Senor Guapo here is once again, for this time, something a little different. Something not a tackle. Anyways, we've got Kristen, I think. Yeah, I'm here still. All right. For now. We got Kristen on the road, so guys, potentially we could lose Kristen if she hits a dead zone, but she will try to get back, and, and uh, it'll just keep on going like that. You're going to see in the title of this video, it's going to be called something along the lines of Survivor Series Weekend Aftermath. Basically, a uh, little quick skim for all of us, conversation-wise, through what's going on on Raw, SmackDown, NXT, falling out from Survivor Series, and of course, TakeOver War Games, and a couple of other things, and what we thought of the pay-per-view, and whatever. So there's no picks, there's no predictions, there's no pay-per-view pick -em. this is just the three of us shooting the shit, and I hope, at least, for the big, at least for the big four pay-per-views, that this aftermath sequence is something that we can keep doing in the future, but we will see how it goes. Also, Spaz, what up? Would, would you say we're spitballing sports? Jesus Christ. <laughs> we're not even a minute in and you gotta drop a Taz <laughs> reference. Um, I'm sorry, I got a hack. Sorry. I, I am gonna sort of give a little bit of a spoiler for those of you that watched my last NXT review. I teased that there was going to be a bonus video sometime in December uh, to sort of fill the void as I take December off. That is going to be literally the three of us doing our fantasy predictions for next year's WrestleMania. We are each going to make a power card of ten matches. We're going to talk about it. We're going to do some fantasy booking, probably better than WWE. And as Guapo is probably going to point out to me any second now, this is a direct ripoff of... Um, it, 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 it's a big hack of uh, the Taz Show podcast, and they did WrestleMania off the hook. So I'm going to be uh, calling... We do that all the time anyway. Half of our show is ripped off of them, so... It's true. But I'm going to change it up just enough so that they can't give me a cease and desist. This is going to be known as WrestleMania off the cuff. And hopefully, depending on all of our schedules and whatnot, that's going to be actually dropped on my birthday. So for those of you that know when my birthday is, you'll know when to watch your subscription boxes. Uh, for those of you that don't, uh, I don't know, come talk to me on Still Facebook. watch your subscription boxes. Still watch your subscription boxes or come talk to me on we Facebook. We will be there. And ask me when my Someday. birthday is. All right. So there's a few things I want to talk about before we actually get into what went down Survivor Series weekend. A couple of them are pretty simple. And one, I'm pretty sure, is going to be a super short topic. Kristen. Guapo. What the hell are they doing with Jason Jordan? <laughs> I assume he's going to have a few of the Triple H now. No, but like, week to week, what the hell are they doing with him? Week to Absolutely week nothing, week making nothing, him look yeah. like a little bitch, basically. <laughs> okay, because he's going to have a few of the Triple H. Let me, let, me, let me rephrase this. He's a baby back bitch. Baby back bitch. I want to point out, just this past week on Raw, the quote-unquote main event, because it wasn't the main event, was Jason Jordan versus Kane. First of all, on the surface, that's boring as hell. But Kane destroyed Jason Jordan, then unfortunately destroyed Finn Balor, and then still tried to stand face-to-face -face with Braun Strowman. First of all, I could do a whole separate video on why are they giving this much push to Kane, but how much of an afterthought is Jason Jordan after this? Um, what? He's not even a thought for me right now and to, like, to start with, so it's going to be pretty bad. I would say he's going to be a thought because clearly after Survivor Series, I know I'm jumping ahead, I think he's going to have a feud with Triple H because I don't think it's going to be... Kurt Angle versus Triple H. I think he's gonna, you know, defend his dad's honor and bullshit like that. But do you think, like, even what? if that is the case, and it, if that is the end of the arc, that might revive it a little bit. Do you think, any, like, is w are you gonna care about Jason Jordan versus Triple H? I mean, I usually stick up for a Triple H match, but I, I, I know I won't. But my thing is, unless uh, they turn okay. Jordan heel, it's really not gonna be good. Uh, I don't, I don't agree with that, but. For, for any Triple H match for me, 
it has to be like based on the story. Fair. I mean, um, we've, 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 we've already plugged it. I have a very, very different re- version of what I want Triple H to do at WrestleMania, but it's not going to happen. I just... Okay. What, what bugs me the most about this, and I'm pretty sure it bugs a lot of people, I mean, like, we were all help, we were all happy to see Shelton Benjamin back on SmackDown, because he's still going like he was ten years ago. But, like, you look at Jason Jordan, and how much did we love... American Alpha, and, like, not even that long ago. Like, saying these guys were fucking superstars, they could be singles champs, they could be tag champs, they could run the tag team division, and Gable, I mean, I mean, Gable and Benjamin is kind of an afterthought as well on SmackDown, but, like, how far down the ladder has this supposed push push Jason Jordan? Because he's getting destroyed by Strowman, he's getting destroyed by Kane, He's the pawn in a Braun Strowman Kane feud that n- I don't really want to see. That nobody cares about. Yeah. Do I need to reiterate the Baby Back Bitch song? Yeah. Okay. It's, <clears throat> and, 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 and because of the fact that they stick the main events in the middle of Raw now, this was actually technically in the main event slot, and I just I just don't know. There is another one that is going to pertain to Kristen, which I'm going to get to in a minute. But we've got... Yeah. Uh, please, please have my phone drop out right now. Please, hit it in. <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing that please. just yet. We're gonna, no, we're going to talk about something a little bit more exciting. We're going to talk about call-ups from NXT. First of all, one that actually technically hasn't happened yet, but Hideo wow. Itami is on his way up to 205 Live. I don't know whether to be excited about that or not. I'm sure he isn't. I'm, I'm actually happy Hodeo's getting moved up to 205. It's it's shitty in one aspect, but great in another because, hey, now we're going to get to see Hideo on Raw, uh, plus he's going to be a good fixture for the 205 brand. And then hopefully, maybe in the future, we'll see him doing stuff either on Raw and SmackDown or Raw or SmackDown, whichever, one, whichever brand he uh, ends up on. Because I don't, I don't see him staying only in 205 with the cruiserweights. My big hope is like basically there's two people that they're hanging the whole cruiserweight division on right now. They're hanging it on Enzo, which isn't great but serves its purpose. And wild returns that uh, WWE managed to actually like come to some sort of agreement with Neville that he's going to, like, come back, finish off some shit with the Cruiserweights, and then move on. And if finishing off that shit is a quick feud between Neville and Hideo Itami to give Hideo Itami the title, um, that could potentially turn that division around. I mean, nobody's going to watch 205 Live that's not watching it now. But, I mean, as far as the segments of the Cruiserweight division on Raw, I think between... Okay, we're going to slide in Enzo to to sort of boost something there. We're going to try and bring back Neville and make him seem like a bigger deal. We're going to put in Hideo, who's got all the, uh, what do you want to call it, the um, the NXT, you know, guys from NXT can do no wrong as far as the fans are concerned. I think between the three of them, it, they could make it a bigger deal. Because Enzo, Enzo's from, from, um, from NXT, but he, like, sort of was a mess all over Raw before they put him in the Cruiserweight division. I think this is the first person that's been brought up directly from NXT to 205 Live, and I think they'll focus on that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of... I'm kind of mad about the idea. Although, Hideo Itami, for me, has not had a good run since he got injured and then got injured again. Yes. I don't know what we're talking about. I'm sorry, I'm blank. He's kind of been, he's kind of been in limbo. Well, he's he's stagger stopped so many times, and I think if he's gonna because there's no mid card title on NXT, and he's not gonna be in the main event picture. I mean, Drew McIntyre is injured temporarily right now. Almas is the champion. We're gonna talk about that in a second. You got guys like Alist- Alistair Black, uh, even though I don't like him, Velveteen Dream. You got Lars Sullivan. Um, 
if you've read NXT spoilers, you already know who's getting a title shot at the Royal Rumble. Yeah, I'm more than happy with it. Uh, me too. Uh, we're not going to talk about that here, though. Um, it's one of those things where you might as well move Hideo up because he's not going to get wedged in that main event scene on NXT. Like, he's a perfect mid-carder for NXT, but there's nothing for a mid-carder to do on NXT, if you get my meaning. So it almost makes more sense to bring him up than somebody that's main evented NXT because the people main eventing there are doing something. Agreed. And I'd rather see Hideo move up than somebody like Cassius Ono. Cause I really exactly. Don't know. Hideo's been in the NXT system quite a while now. Even while hurt. I mean, you know he's going to all the meetings, he's going to all the practices, watching, learning, and honing his craft. Before Kevin Owens. I was going to say, he brought Finn Balor in to be his surprise tag team partner, and he's still there. And, I mean, Finn got a, got a heck of a run in NXT before he went up to the main roster, and now you can sort of question what he's doing, but he's seen big moments and big opportunities, and he was even the Universal Champion for a hot second there. Um, and they got hurt, goddamn. Literally, one second. Well, actually, technically a full 24 hours, but... I uh, I hope good things, because the other thing is, too, if you bring him up to the main roster, he's another little guy, and yeah. you can have little guys that aren't part of 205, I mean, no offense, but we've got Sami Zayn, we've got Ty Dillinger, we've got Finn Balor, um, so if you try to make him another one of the little guys on the main roster, I think he might get lost in the shuffle again, but I think for for, uh, like, like I say, to bring that NXT momentum, that NXT, oh my god, he came so close so many times and he just hasn't had his shot yet, like that, that idea from the fans, uh, into 205 Live, even if you don't care about 205 Live, I think people's well wishes for Hideo will force them to watch, force them to at least pay attention to what WWE does with them. Well, and it will make the people that do care about 205 Live will care about it. And, I mean, there's always the the uh, potential and almost sure match we're going to get between Hideo Itami and Akira Tozawa. Uh, yeah, that's... Which will break somebody's face. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> All right. In keeping with the, uh, with the bring-ups from NXT to the main roster, we have five, count them, five new women on Raw and SmackDown, and we're going to talk about the page thing in a second, too. But we got Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Ruby Riot, who's got an extra T on her name now for some reason, Liv Morgan, and Sarah Logan. And again... Uh, these are on Raw and SmackDown. Yes. Uh, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville are with Paige on Raw, Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, and Sarah Logan are on SmackDown. Can we talk about that they essentially did the exact same thing, these two groups, just on different shows? Um, yes. I don't, I don't agree. I, I don't really, agree. you don't agree they came in and attacked a bunch of people backstage? Oh, they did, no, they, they did the same did. things. They did the same things, but I think they're opposite stories. On Raw... I mean, Raw's the main show, you need a big name on a big show, so obviously the return of Paige, which everybody's all excited about. But on one pa on one side, you've got Paige, who's a fully established woman on the roster, um, who's br sort of brought in two lackeys, and they're getting the rub off of being associated with Paige, while they've got Paige, who, I guess in the sense of this particular faction, is sort of the veteran, who's brought in two sidekicks, but they're very much leaning it towards, like, the pre-existing uh, name value of Paige, whereas you've got three brand new girls on SmackDown that almost show up with this, yeah, we don't need anybody that came before us, we can get this shit done on our own. Th it's different enough for me to overlook it. Plus, like, uh, there was a rumor a little while ago that we were going to get Paige, Ruby Riot, and Nikki Cross as a faction. But if I have to settle for having one of them literally on each show, far better result as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, the I I guess now that you put it that way, it, it, that is right. The SmackDown women are kind of the SmackDown group is kind of doing a uh, 
kind of like what the Nexus did at the very beginning, like the whole we're the new guys invade the yeah. At the very beginning, before it all fucking fell apart. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, and this is where I'm, I'm going to go back to the Hideo Itami thing again. As far as who they brought up, people are, at least what I've seen, a lot of people on Facebook and Twitter, etc., are so pissed off because they were so sure that if somebody got brought up, it was going to be the iconic duo. And I'm sorry, I fully swear that because so many people said it, WWE were like, okay, we're going to bring up somebody else, fuck you. Uh, I think it's more of that NXT needs needs the iconic duo only for the pure fact that without them, who are the pure heels besides Nikki Cross? I don't think Nikki Cross is heel. Uh, nah, people fucking sort of not really. Uh, yeah, she, like sanity as a whole is sort of chaotic neutral, right? Sanity as a whole is a they're in like the Steve Austin area of. They're, yeah. uh, they're heel, but they're over, so it really doesn't work. Like, they tried to pull it off. Program. They tried to pull off the whole Nikki Cross-Ruby Riot thing with Ruby Riot being, like, the bona fide babyface and Nikki Cross, you know, being the heel by default, but way too many people love Nikki Cross. Like, it's, like I'm a fan of Nikki Cross, and it's unreal, the following she has. I, here's, here's, the, here's the reason the iconic duo is still in NXT. It's the same reason why, I think it's a very similar reason why they kept Bailey on NXT when they brought the other three horsewomen up. You need some, you need people that are established in NXT. If you have to start all over with a brand new roster, then you don't know, like when somebody beats somebody, you don't know, does that, is that great? Is that good? I mean, you still have Ember Moon who's been there, but. Yeah. You have Ember Moon and the iconic duo. So essentially, if they when they bring new people in, which they're going to, because they essentially ransacked half the women's roster, you need somebody that when these new people show up, when these new people show up, if they beat somebody, you're like, oh shit, because I know how this person, how this person's career has been, so that like means something if they win or lose against them. And the thing is, like, the same the same as I just said about Hideo Tommy is kind of true for all of these girls as well. I mean, like, Ruby Riot was kind of in the title picture, like, in and out on NXT. But for the most part, the rest of them, Mandy Rose was hardly ever on TV. Sonya Deville was, like, just starting to get some exposure. Liv Morgan wasn't on that much. Sarah Logan was on literally twice. And then she was in the Mae Young Classic, but that's about it. I like the fact that they brought up the mid-carters of NXT because you need mid-carters in WWE. Like, if we wait, and and you see it with uh, guys like Finn Balor, guys like um, Bobby Roode, guys like Samoa Joe, etc., because they go, they reach the precipice of NXT, we see them as main eventers. So then we're sort of jarred when they're not main eventers on the main show where Bobby Roode being in the mid-card is actually pretty fucking great, because the mid-card is usually where you get your better matches. Now, all these women can't possibly get a women's title match at the same time. So, bring up some mid-carders, and let them be mid-carders on the main roster, and it doesn't seem out of place. Whereas, you, you brought up uh, Asuka, and I think we just lost Kristen, which is unfortunate. You bring up Asuka and people are upset that she's not the champion already. Or you bring up... Or you bring up, uh... I don't know, like, if you brought up Ember Moon right now, it wouldn't make sense, but people would want her to be a champion right away. With these, you don't. With these, you've got mid-carters that people are sort of comfortable with being mid-carters, because we're still getting to know them. Um, uh, yes, uh... I definitely agree with that. And if you... If you went... And we're losing you. And I mean, you don't you don't just want it to be a pattern either. You don't just want it to be a pattern of okay, you hang out for a while, we give you a belt, and then we send you off to the main roster. Because then, if that's the pattern every single time, then nobody cares. Look at it like how Bay did it. Uh, she never won an NXT title. Then she went up to SmackDown. 
kicked some ass, won the SmackDown Women's title twice, then went to Raw, and now she's a two times Raw title uh, women's holder. Absolutely. And I I was 100% behind Bliss because I thought they misused her in NXT, and usually it's the other way around. Usually it's like, oh my god, there's these great people from NXT, how's, how's the main roster misusing them so much? The entire time she was in NXT, she was developing her character, but she was managing Blake and Murphy. So when you got her to the main roster and she got to actually wrestle, like it was like, oh my god, we've actually waited for this, we can actually enjoy it. Uh, I think you'd get the same thing here. Like I say, friggin', um, my specific example is Sarah Logan. We saw her wrestle like as a jobber on NXT, and then she was in the Mae Young Classic, and then she was gone again. So we get to find out now who she is on the main roster, and I think that's cool. And if you want to do it, if you want to sort of disguise them a little bit by keeping them in these factions for a little bit, that's not the worst thing in the world either. As long as they don't start breaking everybody up into three-person factions again. Well, there was a rumor at one point that P- the Paige was going to be like the mastermind behind both factions, and that would have been kind of cool, but they didn't go that way. When they decided that Paige's group's name was... I'm okay with that. When Paige's group named themselves Absolution, all I heard was the evolution theme in my head. Like, that's it. I would have been okay if they came out to the evolution theme. (laughs) Yeah. And then, like, Ruby Riot just being the Riot Squad is, like, so fucking simple and good. It just... It just works. So, I mean... Like, the rosters on both brands have just almost doubled in the span of two weeks. Can't really complain about that, because as good as the women that are already there are, uh, it was getting pretty fucking stale. I mean, maybe we move Naomi back down to developmental or to the unemployment line, I'm just saying... That part's never going to happen, unfortunately. I don't know, man. Riot Squad fucked her up pretty good on SmackDown. I, I'm not going to pretend that I didn't enjoy that a whole bunch. However, I mean, I like what they're doing. I do feel like we are getting a lot of women wrestlers now, which is not a bad thing, because now you're not going to be diluting it to where... Okay, great, we get to watch Naomi versus insert whoever it is. Or we're not going to have Charlotte Flair versus Sasha Banks for the 20th million time. So we're get we're, we're finally going to get a little bit more variety. Um, it feel so warm and fuzzy that I disappeared and came back and you're still talking about women's wrestling. Well, what division just got jacked up by six people? And I mean seven if you want to include Asuka, because Asuka didn't come to the main roster not that long ago either. This is true. This is true. Uh, I mean, and I mean also, it just it just feeds the rumors about there being a women's Royal Rumble this year, which not only am I a fan of, but is super overdue. Are they excited to watch the Royal Rumble this year. Hey, I'm always if they, excited. If they do a women's Royal Rumble, it's that's a massively good step for their uh, what they're trying to go for. I mean, they've already tried they've already tried to accomplish every type of women's women's type match uh, or uh, stipulation match already. So the Some next of them the next successful than others. Correct, but the next the next gradual step is going to be a women's Royal Rumble. Uh, apparently, it's not going to stop at Rumble, either. Apparently, we might be getting a chamber, too. I'm okay with that. We so, have enough good, talented women that we can do that with. Yeah. And, I mean, like, even okay. if they... Okay, before, before we go any further, then, can I propose an idea and what? see what you guys think of it? You absolutely can propose an several, idea. Several... Several people I've seen on the internet, not me, because I'm still unsure. I'm still, uh, I'm still unsure on the idea. Uh, women's tag team belts. Yes. Uh, it it adds something else. Um, 
besides the one woman's belt to chase after. I mean, we we make the same argument about uh, having a mid card title. That can technically be like a mid card title for the women. See, but here's the thing, though. Like, if they, I don't mind doing it because like there's enough talent to do it now. But it's not just a matter to me, anyways. It's not just a matter of saying, oh, we have enough women, let's let's create a different kind of title. I think if you're going to have a... If you're going to have a women's tag team championship, you need to actively go out onto the indies, onto wherever Triple H finds all these women, and actually seek out already existing female tag teams. You Like, if they put, if they put the tag team things together, and all they do is take everybody they currently have and slam them into teams, that's not going to get it done. I would like to say, though, that that would be progressive on WWE's point, because they already do it with the men anyways, so why not? Yeah, but we don't don't like that either, though. So do we want to show... I know we don't, don't, I'm being funny, but... Do you want to, unless you want to have this message where, hey, women can do anything the men can do, even the stuff we don't like... Even, even the shitty things. But if you think back in the day, like, you had Lay Cool. I mean, TNA had the beautiful people, for however good you want to say that that was. Um, uh, WWE has always had usually one, maybe more than one, but it's usually definitely been one team. It's like, there definitely should be a tag team, but there's no division for them to be in. And Lake right. Cool, well, no, you know, look at... Um, you have the iconic duo now. The iconic, you have the iconic duo. I mean, if they weren't on separate shows now, I would say Nikki Cross and Ruby Riot as a team. Uh, back in the day when Beth Phoenix was still around, you had the Divas of Doom. That was all right. Yes. Uh, always had it and NXT, NXT, and NXT Charlotte, Charlotte and uh, Sasha Banks were the best friends. Yeah. Oh, the uh, yeah. Um, but I, I, I do want to say something that's going to probably break Kristen's heart. That's okay. If they do do the female, like, tag team championship idea, you know who they're going to put it on. Yeah, the Bellas will probably get it first. <laughs> Actually, you know what? But, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the Bellas, and I will say, a little quick shout-out, not that I think it really matters. Anybody that hasn't listened to the Lillian Garcia podcast, I think it's called Chasing Glory, she's interviewed the Bella Twins, like, back-to-back on consecutive weeks. Don't laugh at me. Go listen to the interviews. There's also one with Alexa Bliss. Uh, they're pretty good because it's mostly not wrestling. It's mostly like public issues stuff, world issues stuff, like pretty like not entertainment slant on an interview. And uh, I think a lot of people out there that are fans of women's wrestling, like we are, we all are, uh, would enjoy that quite a bit. But I'm sorry. The Bellas ain't going to be around that much longer anyway. If you want to stay around long enough to help establish these belts, put over another team on your way out, it's not I, the worst I thing. I don't mind that. I don't know if they will because I don't know that Brie Bella's coming back. She wants to. Does she? Okay. She I, wants I to. I know I know. Nikki I Bella has been told that she basically, like, because of her neck, she can basically physically get away with working like a John Cena schedule. And, I mean, Bree's just, you know, had a kid, so there's that whole aspect to it, too. And she's got, she's, you know, helping Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan's going to wrestle, quote-unquote, whether it's in WWE or not. Anyways. I, I just want to put this out there, because, you know, I would be all for a women's tag team belt. I'm hesitant about it right now, because last time we had a, like, major wrestling company, quotes, have a women's tag team belt. You had it in uh, in TNA. Yep. And they had it, and then it, like, they kind of realized they didn't have the roster for it, or they didn't have, they didn't have, the mixture wasn't right. And, and then they put them on ODB like, and Eric Young. <laughs> yes, and then, they, and then they didn't defend it, and then it just went away. And I don't want that. If you're going to establish belts, then I then I want to establish belts. I don't want this thing. I want it well thought. I want it thought out. 
Yeah. And the other thing is, too, the other thing is, too, what they would have to do with the tag, if they did a tag team division on on uh, WWE for the women, they would have to pull back on booking their solo stars in tag team matches. Mm-hmm. Like, like, they would have to make tag team wrestling a special thing. Yeah. But, I mean, like... I don't we, know that- I don't know that we. I know that there's plenty of women because we've had the uh, we've had the Mae Young Classic, but I just I don't feel like currently on the roster there's enough to establish a tag team division, and the women's tag team belt would probably have to be defended on Raw and SmackDown right now with the current roster. Yeah, that would have to be a floater. I don't see them doing like red, blue, and yellow women's tag team titles. Well, yeah, I, I really I really don't think there's enough women on the current roster to... To sustain three to tag team divisions? Tag team. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, draft some people around, switch some people around, put the women's tag team titles on Tamina and Nia Jax. And then everybody... Yes. And then everybody else yeah. dies. <laughs> shall we? Uh, shall we talk about SummerSlam? Uh, well, I'm gonna not go- SummerSlam, Survivor Series. Sure, let's go. A couple pay per views back. Talk about SummerSlam. But, 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 well, show. but, but, but Kristen, wait! I, 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 I'm rendering a premonition. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, guys! I'm, I'm losing you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm king. <laughs> you're, 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 Oh, Kristen, I knew you'd come. <laughs> In all honesty, and if we stop picking on Kristen for a second, <laughs> they had to do this. Because Matt Hardy, like old school Matt Hardy version one, without Jeff and without the broken gimmick, ain't doing shit. And yeah, I know. When he came out, I was like, oh, there's... I, I can't remember the last time I saw Matt Hardy. Well, he's done some stuff. He's had some matches. He had a, he actually had a pre-show match uh, at Survivor Series that was unannounced. I mean, we're going to talk about uh, War Games before we talk about Survivor Series, but he's just been doing shit like that. They throw him on a pre-show. They throw him in a mixed tag with somebody. They had him tag-teaming with Jason Jordan for a while because that's a barn burner that's going to set the world on fire. Um, well, yeah. But, um... But we said that, like, I think uh, back, uh, Guapo, when you and I were talking about the uh, the final deletion matches and shit like that, we were saying, yeah. like, you have them in TNA, like, who's their counterpart in WWE? It's Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no... Nobody else in WWE... In all seriousness, this would be the best way to bring the broken gimmick in. And it makes sense. Yes, because... Brother Nero and, is outbroken and helps, himself. And helps, well, and it helps Bray Wyatt, too, if he, like, breaks Matt Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. However, it will still make uh, Bray the Eater pins uh, in the long run. Uh, yeah, probably, I don't think but, so. You know, I, don't I don't think, think so, because the, Hardy, the Hardys are the veterans in this scenario, right? And I don't see Matt like, if he has any creative control over this whatsoever, um, I don't see Matt being the one that eats up a whole lot of win. I see him being the one behind more mind games, like do, going like a sort of an Undertaker route, but not really, like getting the one-upsmanship on the mind games, like leading up into a match, but I mean, like, the Hardys know how to do business the right way. They know Bray Wyatt needs the wins. So, like, they can mm-hmm. t- they can tell the story going in and then pass the win on to him, and it's not going to hurt them at all. So I don't necessarily think that it's going to destroy Bray. Like, the Hardys being broken could be the best thing that happened to Bray. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because it will give Bray somebody to work with. Yes, and if you... That's not, that's not Finn Balor for the 20,000th time. And if you saw the uh, the little 20-second video that Matt Hardy put on Twitter today, uh, there is an appearance by Senior Benjamin. What? Senior oh, yeah. Benjamin? And King Maxwell was at Starcade. 
Ah, yeah. And Rebby has never left Twitter. <laughs> well, of course. Reb- okay, if you want to get entertained on Twitter, follow Rebby Hardy and Donald Trump. That's all you need to do. <laughs> also, wait, wait, no, I think that he got a new one. Uh, Iron Sheik's Twitter, but I think he got a new uh, person tweeting for him. Oh, no. Oh, dear Jesus. But, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, obviously, Jeff will be brother something when he comes back. I mean, they brother can't... Brother Nero, yeah. They can't, like, they said it when they first came to WWE in an interview. They are like, well, Broken Matt might be trademarked, but you can't trademark Brother Nero because he is my brother and his name is Nero. Like, his middle name is Nero. So, you can't really trademark that shit. And Anthem put out a press thing like this past week in order to try and keep their current talent happy and not running for the hills. All their current contracts have been rewritten with language that fully allows them to take their TNA-created gimmicks and use them anywhere else. Huh. Which is basically them trying to make the Hardys happy and not sue and not get WWE to sue for them, in my opinion, but... Because they finally real- came to the realization that there's no way they're winning that case. But I mean, like it, it works for it works for Anthem too, right? Like if Anthem or whoever owns fuck that owl wrestling now, like if WWE takes the Broken Hardys gimmick and puts it on an even bigger platform, and then TNA somewhere along the way like goes into their vault of footage and wants to release a best of Broken Hardys. Because of WWE portraying that same gimmick, more people are going to know who they are. They're going to sell more DVDs. I mean, let's be real for a second. Right. I mean, how much money are they making right now on, like, best of AJ Styles, best of Samoa Joe, <coughs> best of Bobby Roode, best of Eric Young, etc., etc., etc.? Because they've all managed to maintain their names and whatnot. I mean, our truth is. Best didn't of all th- Aries. Yeah. <laughs> Do you he- have you seen what Austin Aries is doing now? Yes, and with, with it X-Pac? seems like he's just becoming more of a dick. With X-Pac? Yeah. Kristen, have you seen what Austin Aries is doing with X-Pac? Have we lost Kristen again? Probably so. We're talking about Broken Matt. She's been deleted, okay. yeah. No, but they've got, like, DX shirts made up that are not DX. Like, it's the whole vegan thing. It's like... V-Generation X and it's just mm-hmm. like s- stop the pain uh, um, have you listened to his uh, to Jericho's podcast with Austin? I have I've also, who else did I hear? Hey, Kristen's back Yep I think I'm just gonna in bra- when I title this video I'm just gonna put in brackets Kristen in dead zones <laughs> Yep Anyway, so Austin Aries a bit of a twit nowadays, but whatever so, <coughs> on to war games. Um, this isn't going to take me very long, because there's only a couple matches that really matter. Lars Sullivan versus Cassius Ono. Does anybody care? Yeah. Meh. Mm. Lars Sullivan is the NXT Braun Strowman. And he's Basically. killing people. And he's killing people. Um, it happens. Most overrated match of the whole goddamn weekend. Velveteen Dream versus Aleister Black. I get it. They told some good stories. I don't see where this five-star, you know, 9.999 out of 10 fucking shit is coming from. But I will give them that it was a decent match. They they buttoned up the story when the match was over. I thought that was pretty cool. And Alistair Black's a fucking beast, and he should be fighting for the title right now. Agreed. Give him time, he will make it to the title. And Especially if the person that was announced to be fighting for the title wins the title. Oh my god, if he wins and then Aleister Black is the next contender, right. that's, that's going to be such a right. mismatch. It'll be so good, right. but it'll be such a mismatch. It'll be so per- it'll be a great match. And I'm sorry, but Black Wannabe Gold Dust can go away. I I've seen him live and in person. I get that he's an athletic dude, he can hold his own in the ring whatever, but go away. 
I, 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 no, I have no time. Shocker of the night. I'm sorry, I gotta say, and I don't know whether it was because of injury or not. Andrade Cien Almas picking up the NXT title from Drew McIntyre. Yeah, didn't see that coming. Did not see that coming. I assume it was going to come to injury. I do no, too. It wasn't. Really? No, uh, the the injury wasn't a shoot, or it wasn't uh, anything. Uh, they had uh, I forget who it was. I forget. Uh, I think it was on Tash on one of the Taz uh, podcasts that uh, there was Dave Meltzer. One of them uh, had said that uh, he got hurt in the match, and he was it was already uh, predetermined that it was a uh, Andrade yeah. before before he even got hurt. And I mean, I keep I keep saying it till I'm blue in the face. Like I I still am not a hundred percent on Almas like as a character. I mean the Selena Vega thing. Sure helps, but like, fuck! I gotta say, the guy's good in the ring. I I saw him live at the at the house show. I saw actually this match at the house show that I was at in Toronto, and it's a hell of a match. And the size difference is fucking insane between the two of these guys. They put on a great match. I ten times out of ten, I would not have bet on Al, on uh, Almas winning this match. Same. Ditto. Ditto. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Kristen, are you there? <laughs> Is she I there? think we lost her again. She's been deleted. Anyways. So, because we haven't talked about enough women already, uh, Ember Moon becoming the new NXT Women's Champion over Kyrie Sane, Peyton Royce, and Nikki Cross. Heartbroken. Hold that shit. Okay, we've got Kristen back. That was the best time for me to come back. All you have to do is start talking about women's wrestling, and I appear, apparently. Delete! Delete! Well, I've already said that if there was a YWC Women's Tag Team Championship, it would be you and Shannon from the Married Marks podcast, so... Also, here's my annual shout-out for them. If you haven't checked out the Married Marks podcast yet, go do it because they're awesome, and it's a lot of fun, and they don't grouch nearly as much as us. Um, I'm okay with the result. I'm still kind of bitter that Nikki Cross didn't win, because Nikki Cross. Uh, Ember Moon will be all right. I'm pretty sure Nikki Cross is going to be her first big contender, considering that... Uh, I think Peyton Royce and Kyrie Sane are having a number one contenders match in a couple of weeks. So we'll see how that plays out. And hopefully, sooner than later, we're going to see more women coming up from the Mae Young Classic. Either that, or they're going to, uh, I don't know, push Aaliyah. Because I don't know why they're not pushing Aaliyah. Because she's Aaliyah. That's not nice at all. <sighs> don't knock my hometown girl. Come on now. Uh. Well, you know. When they actually let her wrestle, she's pretty damn good. And we lost Kristen again. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I don't I don't even... Other than to throw Billy Kay in there with Ember Moon, because Peyton Royce already had a shot. I think Billy Kay is about to come back, because I think she's been hurt. Yeah, she's been in Peyton Royce's corner a lot. I think out of the two of them, Billy Kay was getting a little bit more attention from the fans, so I think they focused on Peyton Royce, especially with Billy Kay being injured. So, I mean, when you see a team like that that are supposed to be a team, and you see one, you know, sort of becoming the Sean and one sort of becoming the Marty, you put more focus on the other one, try to even out the crowd's reaction or the crowd's exposure. It's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. But, if you want to talk about the worst thing in the world, would you like to be trapped in the 2017 version of War Games? Guapo, Guapo your thoughts on War Games? The, ma the War Games match itself, or the, uh, whole, uh, the whole show? The, the, the War Games match itself. There should have been a top on the cage. Uh, 
I'm 50-50 on that. Like, on the one hand, uh, if you're bringing back an old idea, you want to bring it back the way it is. But then, you know, I did listen to the interview with Triple H, and it's like, if you're just going to repeat the past, then, like, why wouldn't you just leave it in the past? If you want to take something and recreate it in your own image... I get his want to do it. I mean, like, back in the day when this thing was created, you didn't have... I mean, you had athletes, don't get me wrong. You had the types of superstars that could do great shit for their day. But, I mean, let's be real. Like, the the Road Warriors and the Andersons and, and shit like that weren't doing backflips off the top of a cage. They're, they had no reason to, to get rid of the top. It gave them more opportunities to do more different types of things, especially the big fucking suplex spot at the end, which was fucking insane. Oh, yes. And the whole match itself was really good. Uh, it was a little all over the place, but then again, we knew that's what we are going to get with three teams inside of a massive cell and two rings. Yeah. So. And the two rings look really weird. Like, it's a weird setup for the rest of the pay-per-view where they have to alternate between rings. Mm-hmm. Where they had, and I mean it, like, it's the only fair thing you could have done like for the crowd that was there in the live attendance you don't want to be the guy in front of one ring while all the other matches happen in this in the second ring or whatnot but um but all the spots I mean fucking I know there was a lot of attention put on the three captains with the uh, Eric Young and who's it Eric Young Adam Cole and uh, Roderick Strong. But, I'm sorry, the unsung hero of that match was Killian Dane. Killian Dane coming off the top rope more than once. Killian Dane doing a freaking Shane McMahon coast-to-coast was insane. Um, like, like I say, the big suplex spot off the top near the end. The only thing I will say is, I mean, yeah, they incorporated a chair, but, one, like, one running knee from Adam Cole was ultimately what won the match. And it's all you needed. And it's all you needed, but and I don't want to sound like I'm shitting on anybody in this match cuz everybody everybody put the fucking work in. But at the same time, of all the cool shit that they did, one running knee ending the match, on on one hand it was a, like a punctuation point, but on the other hand it was kind of like Imagine a cruiserweight match where they do all the insane athletic shit and then the match ends with like a body slam. Like it's it's, it's I don't want to say anticlimactic because it didn't change my opinion of the match, but I'm surprised it didn't end off one of the crazy fucking spots. Uh yeah, uh, I agree with you there just because the, I feel like there should have been it should have been at least one massive spot, but I, I I was content with what we got with everything, though. Oh yeah, no, not it's not it's not to say that I wasn't uh, that I was in any way not content with the match. It's just it was a ver- it was I guess you could say an odd choice to finish it off. Um, what's his name? The the other guy in Sanity, not Killian Dane. The guy that always looks like he's... No, um... Not Eric Young, not Killian Dane. The tall, skinny, crazy German fucker. Yeah, I don't remember his name. Yeah, he bled like a fucking beast. Mm -hmm. Like, on more than one occasion. And, I mean, the, the, the downside to this is... And it's kind of the same when we talk about Survivor Series. But, uh... Like, the winner of this doesn't get anything. So they did all this amazing, cool shit, but, like, okay, and obviously the ROH boys won, which which makes sense. <coughs> I can I can totally go with them winning, because they're the, they're the newest team, they're the ones that need to win, Authors of Pain and Roderick Strong aren't really a team, Sanity already has the tag team belts, so they don't really need it, but, like, what did they win? I don't, I don't know. And we really have lost Kristen. Like, this is really a thing. Anyways. Hmm. Keep talking for a second, Guapo. Guapo. Guapo talking. Talking Guapo. I don't know what to talk about. Wrestling. Wrestling, yes. Uh, delete. Broken Matt Hardy. Yes. 
Yes. I'm, rem I'm rendering a premonition. Yes. I see the a a black cat feline. Yes. And and what's that? She's she's on WWE Shop dot com, and and she's purchasing Nikki Bella merchandise. Oh no. Yes. <clears throat> oh, <My hat. laughs> uh, you are the worst commercial break ever, Guapo, and that is a fact. Denver. And, Hello. And we have Kristen back. back. We just finished talking about the War Games match. Do you have thoughts on the War Games match? Nope. All, All right, right then. Talk. Good talk. This is why you're going to be deleted, yes. Oh, Jesus I'm you... stopping to get gas. Alright. Alright, so let's move on to Survivor Series. Let's talk about two matches that we did not predict because we did not know that they were going to be part of Survivor Series. First of all, Elias versus the not broken Matt Hardy. For reasons. Yeah, do we have an opinion on this match? Because, I mean, there's nothing about it. Uh, other than the fact that Elias is the Triple H of, like, coming out with a sort of sometimes cheesy gimmick, but then, like, fucking people up in the ring, I've got nothing else much to say. I mean, Matt Hardy put him over, which is nice, I guess, in a feud that doesn't exist, in a match that wasn't announced. What I didn't like, honestly, and even though I like all four people involved, I did not like that they added Breezango versus Owens and Zayn to this. Because we know that Owens and, what Owens and Zayn did later on in the night. It would have been much more shocking, much more impactful if we hadn't already seen them earlier in the night. And we haven't seen Breezango in the ring in for fucking ever because they've been doing the Fashion Files thing. And so they came back to actually wrestle and get squashed in a match that nobody on earth thought they were going to win. So they had no reason to get invested in it. Um, it's I think that's a little nitpicky, the first part of your argument anyways. Which, the part about them being there later on in the night? Yes, that part. <laughs> I think that's a little nitpicky. I, you should guys switch to the Bluetooth in my car. All right. I don't know, it's just like, they were they were pissed off at their boss because they weren't allowed to go in and represent SmackDown, so they went to the pay-per-view that's Raw vs. SmackDown to fight another team from SmackDown. Exactly. For they reasons. Were still, they were still not representing SmackDown. I mean, I'm not going to argue that the match was dumb. It's a dumb match, but I'm just saying I feel yeah. like your your point of their thing would have been more impactful had they not been on the show. I think that's a little nitpicky. Oh, it, it might totally it might totally be nitpicky. It's just you know personal preference thing. I mean, like you got you got four guys in it, and I'm, and I will say this: even though Owens and Zayn are getting a spotlight now, I still don't think they're being used as much as they should be used. And Breezango are fucking wasted. So they've got you got four guys in there that can fucking go. You're gonna get a good match out of it, for especially for a pre-show match. It was an enjoyable match. Uh, I just again, it's it's one of the, with with the pre-show matches. It's one of those I wish I cared more things. Hey Guapo, are you having sex with somebody? What the fuck is going on over there? No, that was earlier. Oh my god. <laughs> good for you. Good for you, but there's a lot of, like, weird noises happening on your end. <clears throat> You're Sorry. at the gas station. I was at a gas station. There we go. Anyways, so I fully announced that. If you are going to start having sex on the show, you got to fully announce that shit. <laughs> I think Trust it was like me. message message Mrs. Guapo and like invite her into the call. Who? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> uh, speaking of kickoff matches that were not Raw versus SmackDown and that I kind of don't wish I cared about anymore because I just don't. Enzo versus Kalisto again, and I don't care. 
and we all thought Kalisto joining the Cruiserweight division would be great, and they've managed to make me not care, and I'm looking forward to Hideo Itami debuting and taking the belt, and have I missed anything? <laughs> No, that's not it. Nope, not really. That's about uh, a lot of it. <laughs> mm hmm. Alright. One of the better matches of the night Shield versus New Day. How much fun was this match? It was a good bit of fun. It was a good bit of fun. Because there's no bad guy in this fun. match. There's no bad yeah. guy in this match. And, like, if they had said, like, a year or so ago that they're going to do Shield versus the New Day. We all would have laughed, and it'd be like, okay, the goofballs are going to get squashed. But they went in there, and they, like, fucked some shit up, and it was good. And there was a whole lot of, like, okay, New Day's going to do the unicorn stomp, and then they're going to do the boom drop, and then they're going to do the big ending, and then S.H.I.E.L.D.'s going to do the triple power bomb, and da-da-da-da-da. But you know what? It was, it was a lot of fun. Super smart to make this the first match of the night, because although there was no titles on the line, and it, I think it was one of the last matches added to the card, I think it's just one of those ones that they can mention and just be like, yeah, we're going to do S.H.I.E.L.D. and New Day. Everybody's going to be like, I'm set, I'm sold. The, uh, the super S.H.I.E.L.D. bomb to end the match was fucking brilliant. And... I agree. This was a really fun match. Um, I... I think I was way more interested in this match than I would have been the Shield taking on the Usos. Well, this is the thing that I've heard, and there's like a whole bunch of problems that were solved really quickly with this, because they wanted the Usos to get a win, because they wanted the Usos to be like their key tag team that they have been for a while now, and there was, but there was no way that the Usos were going to beat the, uh, the, the uh, two-thirds of the Shield. And now that you've reunited the shield, why would you only put two thirds of them on the show? And if you've got another, exactly. if you've got another team of three on the other side, it's like okay, we shuffle the belts around. The shield don't have to lose. The Usos can still win. We can have Shield versus the New Day. The New Day can eat a pin, and it's not really going to hurt them because they're still fun. Um, I do want to say this week on SmackDown, Big E pulling the syrup and the pancakes out of his pants. I'm not down. <laughs> and the Uso is pointing yeah, out Yeah, the... I missed SmackDown this week, so I didn't get that one. Well, it was New Day taking on Benjables. Yeah, it's fucking weird. New Day taking on the Benjables with Uso's on commentary, but, like, New Day brought the Uso's pancakes, but they were, like, down Big E's singlet, and all you hear on commentary is one of the Uso's talking about how warm the syrup is. And it's super awkward. Just, just, just tossing that one out there. That's, that's just really again, weird. Yeah, that's fucking weird. <laughs> but then again, this is pro wrestling. Never mind. Ugh. Pancakes in the pants, though. I don't even think sweeping it under the wrestling rug explains that one. But, I mean, I think the bigger... Like, realistically, the bigger story is S.H.I.E.L.D. coming out of this match. Because... Roman's got the IC title. Roman's now a Grand Slam champion. Uh. Amb Ambrose, Ambrose and Rollins are going to get the tag titles back because fuck the bar, apparently. And, and it is what it is. And, I mean, it's not the first time I'm going to mention Marine 6 tonight, but they took the title off of thing, because first of all, they want S.H.I.E.L.D. to hold all the gold, they want to have that picture again, second of all, Miz is fucking off to do another Marine movie, so they had to take it off him, because apparently they got, like, berated with comments when he, like, left to film the last one, and he was, like, doing, like, interviews from on the movie set, but, like, still had the IC Championship, which I thought was great heel heat, so I don't see that as a bad thing. It was good! It was, it was great, gone, it was, was like... gone for, what, a couple weeks? It was like a mini version of The Rock. Like, I'm way too good for you people, but yet I'm still the champion. Like, he's still... Like, you, can, you, can't, you can't do that on this current Raw, where literally the IC champion is the Raw title. Well, yeah, technically, the Raw, technically the Raw title is the Universal title, and that guy's there even less. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. 
You can't you can't keep it on somebody who's gonna be gone when the universal title is gone. You can't do it when we know what this is leading to at WrestleMania. It's gonna be Roman the IC champion versus Lesnar the Universal Champion and I'm just gonna puke like a whole lot. Because not only is that a match I don't care about, that's a Universal title shot that could have gone to somebody else, and that's an Intercontinental shot that could have gone to somebody else. But... I hope that you're wrong. But, uh, uh... Do you want another bet? No. Okay. Yeah, I just, just thought I'd toss it out there. Although I do have a little bit of faith in the fact that it looks like we're getting a Samoa Joe Roman Reigns feud, which could be fun, except for the only build that Samoa Joe's had up until this point is beating up on Titus O'Neil and Titus Worldwide. So I don't really know how that's going to go. I mean, yeah, you put the tag vital, the tag titles back on Ambrose and Rollins, and then who do they defend them against? Because, like, fuck, there's the bar and there's the bar. <laughs> unless unless they want to make the Miz Taraj like an actual tag team, but that, that'll be... I'm okay with that. Yeah, that'll be terrible. You'll have Curtis Axel wrestling in a red, raw-colored neck brace. Yeah, good point. Mm. I don't know. I'm just saying, honestly, like I like the whole Miz Taraj thing, but if Miz is going to be gone for a while, break up the Miz Taraj... Send Curtis Axel on, like, some killer heel streak. Finally put Bo Dallas with Bray Wyatt. Like, have, bro, uh, have like, Bray and Bo, like, Wy new Wyatt family, to take on the Broken Hardys. Because we remember Bo Dallas in NXT. We remember when Bo Dallas was actually allowed to wrestle, and he was good. And he was the champion. You could very easily do Bo Dallas and Bray Wyatt versus the Broken Hardys. Yes. But anyways, so that's what the New Day is doing. And, or sorry, the other that's day, somebody. Sorry. Oh, uh, well, Drew is silly is that, that the other day I was at work working with my boss and he said something and I said something about something where I was where the answer would have been saying you have to leave. But I stopped myself from saying that and just said believe because I knew nobody would get it. <laughs> Did you tell them believe that? Believe in and the shield? I was a little, little, little sad. Oh, I could have done that. I could have done believe that. He still wouldn't have got it. He's not a wrestling fan. Uh, it just made me sad because I missed believe. Oh, no. It just. Believe. I told that to one of my stalkers the other day, but his name is Bo, so it made it even funnier. Nice. <laughs> and the funny thing is right now like realistically yes, yes. coming out of this New Day is doing nothing and that's still okay because they can still come out and do their ridiculous shit meanwhile S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to go back to like owning all the belts and owning all the main events but yet when they fought each other they looked like equals uh -huh. anyways then we had the women's 5 on 5 Kristen do you want to talk about the women's 5 on 5 And we've lost Kristen again. I'm still here, sort of. Sort of. All right. Women's uh, five on five. I'm still here. Uh, you had Sasha, Bailey, Nia Jax, Alicia Fox, and Oscar versus. <laughs> versus uh, people uh, Becky Lynn this is so cut-tastic right versus <laughs> Becky who else <laughs> Then you guys do it. Fuck. <laughs> Becky Lynch, unfortunately, Naomi, Natalia, 
uh, Charlotte and Tamina. Charlotte was not in it. Sorry, no. No, she was not. Fucking who? Oh, Carmella. Carmella was the other one. There it is. Yeah. I will say, like, this match fell flat because we didn't know until the very last minute that Natalia was going to be the fifth member on the SmackDown team, and it had been so heavily rumored that that's where Paige I was... Knew. That's so heavily rumored that Paige was going to return there, or that somebody else was going to, like, do something good, and then it's just like, no, it's Natalia. Natalia won her way onto this team by losing the women's championship, which is, you know, super awesome. But, uh, yeah, as much as I love some of the other people in this match, the only thing that really sticks out to me is when they let Tamina and Nia Jax go at it, which we need to see more of. Like, what else really of any significance happened here? Um, it may not much. Right? Well, Asuka won, but we knew Asuka was going to win, because there's no way they're going to pin Asuka. Yeah, exactly. Because nobody is, that, nobody is ready for Asuka. Honestly, I thought they would have did a ring out, or, well, uh, count out. Oh, yeah, but that's how they got rid of Nia Jax. I thought it was a really... I mean, I don't know... We can't hear you, Kristen. I know. <laughs> this is great. This is fucking amazing. I love this. I love this a whole bunch. Hey, if we had done this last night, we were going to get Guapo on the road. So, uh, for any of you out there that are really picking on uh, Kristen Hard, we could have been picking on Guapo last night. And we've lost Guapo. And she came back and she left again. Alright. Oh, good lord. Guapo, what do you think about Nia Jax versus Tamina? Oh... Uh... I was I was very interested to see it just because I know I knew before like oh cool Guy Jackson Tamina and this if they do the square off between them that's gonna be the first time that they ever square off because hey they're actual f- blood family right. so it, it would be it would be interesting and hey I, I can see that being a match marquee match type thing for both of them at some point down the line. If not, it would be really good for both of them to be uh, tagging together or something. That would be a good faction between the two or something. Yeah, I could see them being a tag, like, if there was an actual tag division. I don't see sticking the two of them together just for the hell of it. Like, I don't... Uh Uh-huh. But, uh, and the other thing is, like, Becky Lynch was out of this match, like, super early, but also she got taken out on Raw by the Riot Squad, uh, because she's also going to be in the next Marine with The Miz, so she's going to be out for a little bit. So they're going to use her, like, being, like, permanently taken out for a while as, like, the catalyst to, oh my god, the rest of us have to band together, because look what they did to Becky and all that sort of thing. Which is really shitty, because you, you you see Ruby Riot and you see her being more of, like, a brawler style, like, like you know, um, what do you want to call it, like, knuckle-up type fighter, and right. I want to see Ruby Riot versus uh, versus Becky Lynch. When I watched, uh, you watched the Mae Young Classic, right? Yes. So you know Tony Storm. Yeah. When I saw Tony Storm, the first thing I thought was like, she's got to face, she's got to face Becky Lynch. Like it, this needs to happen. But um, on the one hand, on the one hand, and Kristen just said she's permanently lost signal, so we're going on without her, which is we'll see her next time. Um, but good yeah. luck to your future endeavors. Yeah. We as we as a broadcast got future endeavored by Kristen. Um, <coughs> you know what? <coughs> it's just a, a casualty of 
of the, uh, which call it, you're of the uh, buyout. The, you're going to say the Great and, War, aren't you? Yeah, the Great War. <laughs> oh, fuck, the buyout by Intercom? <laughs> exactly. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Seriously? Okay, okay. I'm going to take, take a time out for a second, and everybody's going to roll their eyes at me, because I talk about the Taz show way too much. The, 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 okay, for those of you that don't listen to the Taz show, just, like, don't listen for a second or two, all right? But, like, Guapo, seriously? How fucked up yeah. is the, how fucked up is the Lumberjack Jones situation? I mean, oh, unprofessional, unprofessional Jones over here, cause... Fucking guy I mean, ghosted, he, and he's still in the company. Exactly, it's not that he got fired, he just got moved someplace else, he's not with Taz anymore. Makes me think he like quit because true story, like you know, we or both he, we both love the Taz yeah. show, but he roasted him, like, on a regular basis. Um, but the, but that's Taz personality. I oh mean, I know. But you'd have to be just, you'd have to be a, a certain kind of like a, a personality to to do that. And I, I can you, see somebody being I like, mean, Yo, I've had enough of this. I mean, shoot, you want some news? You're an asshole. <laughs> Mike Johnson. It's perfect because, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the, that's half the reason why I watch, listen to, I say watch, listen to the Taz show just because Taz doesn't, Taz says how it is in his mind and how he views it and shit, it's fucking good, it's funny and it's entertaining and. Of course. I mean, yeah, you gotta you gotta have some thick skin to uh, take all that, but shoot, uh, a freaking Anthony does. You mean the Shockmaster? Yes, the <laughs> Shockmaster. I don't know. Like, if I was him, I would have at least stuck it out till the end of this week. If you consider tomorrow they're doing the Super Show, and they're gonna have uh-huh. fucking they're bringing back Katie Linnendahl, which is fucking. Is that who the uh, other uh, guest is? Uh, Jim Ross. Right. Oh, Kate, Jim's going to be on this week. It's Katie. It's um. I think they brought back uh, Seth, the KFJ, to co-host. Okay. They they've got Katie Linendahl coming back again, which is awesome. Jim Ross, which right. is awesome. Morrison. Uh, Morrison. Which is awesome. And Jericho. Okay. And it's cool. Yeah, it's Jericho. cool for me. And like, I don't. I don't. You know, it's not all about me. But sometimes it is. The last time I saw John Morrison was in an, an indie show we had up here in Mississauga, taking on Pete Dunne. And that match was way too fucking good. I'm just putting mm-hmm. that shit out there. Um, I put out the joke. I mean, like, okay, you've got all the parts. Let let uh, Katie Linendahl like be the ring be the ring announcer, and then like Taz and Jr. can call the match and just have like. Morrison versus Jericho, Jericho. like Morrison right, right, right there in the gimmick clubhouse. Um, tear down before they had to move downtown. Yeah, and I mean the special guest in charge of props can be Nick from Salem. Anyways, <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it has to be uh, Sarah from Chicago. No, no, not Sarah from Chicago. It has to be Pat McGroin. Oh my good lord, he's the best of what we got. Woo! Is the best of what we got in uh, every man's man. Woo! Okay, all right, all right. That, that's enough of that. That's enough. <laughs> all right, moving on to moving on to Corbin. <laughs> moving on to Corbin and Miz. Buy a hat. Oh Jesus Christ! Moving on to Corbin and Miz. Miz got stripped of his Intercontinental Championship after losing to Baron Corbin on the pay-per-view. So Miz ain't having a good time. He's going to go film a movie. He'll come back and he'll fuck somebody up later on. Corbin, it looks like, is going into a feud with Bobby Roode, which yes. is gangbusters for him on SmackDown. But this was a good match for two guys that aren't really looked at as great technical wrestlers, but great characters, great storytellers and whatever. Like, Miz is, is still doing the annoying heel he's always done, but, like, he's believable now in some of the shit. And the whole thing with Baron Corbin and, like, attacking his wife and shit, like, on social media, whatever. Like, you got a little bit of that real, like, what he used to do on Talking Smack with Daniel Bryan. And it's good. Like, you get this cocky-ass guy, but then he turns into that other gear where, like, he's still being aggressive as hell. And he's like, yeah, I'm a cocky asshole and I'm going to come out in these weird-looking coats and do all this Hollywood bullshit, but I'll still fuck you up. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Baron Corbin is just the man with the five head. Like, 
the five head and uh, Kristen Stewart face and the uh, I'm really sad belly. Oh, wow. That that's awkward. <laughs> I I don't even care. What's uh, it called? This, I mean, the match itself wasn't that bad. Uh, it was a way. It was a way. I'm a fan of both guys, and it was still a way better match than even I was expecting. So, and they gave yeah. him some decent time too. Like you figure with two arrogant assholes like this, somebody's gonna cheat, somebody's gonna get a quick win here or there, and they might have made this a quick match, and they didn't. Um, yeah. And the end of days I'm, is still I'm a fucking. I'm happy Corbin got the win on it though. Oh well, yeah. Well, you had to, right? Because Corbin needs something, and the Miz is basically Teflon. Exactly. Right now. And I mean, the end of days is such a fucking gorgeous finishing maneuver. Like, his his setup, like, the, the deep six, like, that itself could be a finisher. But you hit a deep six, you follow it up with an end of days, like, nobody should get up from that. And it's almost like the bigger guy, like, he's gonna fight Bobby Roode, who's qu- quite, a, quite a bigger guy. It almost seems like the deep six, most people, like, as they face a bigger opponent, their their uh, finishing maneuver gets harder because the end of days is such a momentum maneuver. It's almost like it's more effective the bigger guy he does it on, and that's not true for a lot of finishers. And I mean, I'd like to like Bobby Roode's a great in ring mechanic, and it would be great for him to go in there and put over. Um, put over Baron Corbin, but I don't think it's going to happen. We're going to see a glorious Canadian United States champion. <laughs> it will be glorious. Because, you know, yes, that's that's one trend we have in WWE, I'm proud to say, as a Canadian, is a bunch of Canadians holding the U.S. championship. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. And then you go into the other one, which was uh, the car crash that we all thought it was going to be, and that's the Usos versus the Bar. I mean, you got the Usos, who've been doing, like, ridiculously insane shit with the New Day, and you got the Bar, who literally fight so hard they push their teeth up into their own jaw, and... In which he's gonna have to fuck off pretty soon, too, because he has to get another uh, surgery on his mouth, on his uh, teeth. Yeah. That's, so, yeah, because I'm sorry, like, as funny as it is, they can't do the mouthpiece gimmick forever. And, and that's the thing, though. The mouthpiece, he, uh, that's another reason why, like, okay, I really think that he's going to be out for a little while, too, because he, he has to get his teeth fixed still, finish doing that. And if they do do a mouthpiece gimmick on him, it's going to have him more of a form fitting if he's going to talk. Or if he's going to talk, he's going to have to be taking it out. Well, no, like, this is the thing, like, he's not the only one to fight, fight in WWE with a mouthpiece, like, he does oh, it. Oh, yeah. I uh, mean, I know, uh, Shinsuke wears one, uh, Shinsuke Brock does it. wears one. Uh, but it's one of the, like, Neville he... Never wore one. Like, he can wear it, and that's not a problem. The fact that he, they're wearing it, but then they go out, out of their way to emphasize, like, how much it makes him lisp and whatever, like, it makes him look like a goofball, and that needs to go. He can still wear the mouthpiece, and he can still, you know, take it out wear a promo, and he can even, like, finish off his, like, the last thing you see at the end of his promo is him sticking the mouthpiece in. Like, that could be kind of badass. But they're not. They're leaving it in, and they're they're making him lisp, and they're making him, like, stumble over his words or whatever, and I'm, I think it's supposed to be sort of, like, funny, like, barroom humor type stuff, but it's really taking this guy, who we all know is fucking amazing in the ring, just look at the match he had with Rollins this week, one-on-one on Raw, and they're right. and it they're it's taking away from that ever so slightly, and I don't like that. Like it was cool for a little bit, but like it's not a long term thing. And I mean, like you've got the bar who are a tag team on Raw, and you've got the Usos who are by far the tag team on SmackDown. So Usos won. Usos look fucking badass. Usos are fucking badass. Um. And like you say, like Cesaro's got to go away and have surgery. Uh, there's rumors that Sheamus is going to be in some other movies and whatnot coming up. So I don't see them holding on to the belts that long. So what reasonable reason could you possibly have for these guys like not winning the match? I mean, Usos are going to go on, probably face Gable and Benjamin sometime in the near future, or at Clash of Champions, which is going to be such a stupid pay-per-view. The main event is Styles and Jinder Mahal, which I you couldn't pay me to give a shit about. 
Um, oh, for anybody that's wondering, there will not be a tackle or a pay-per-view prediction on this channel for the Clash of Champions, because I've seen what the rumored card is, and it's pretty shit. Oh, yes. Quite shit, yes. All right, so moving on. Um, we haven't talked enough about women's wrestling tonight, so we're going to talk about more women's wrestling. We're going to talk about Charlotte versus Bliss, which is probably second or third best match of the night. Uh, you mean the screw job? Yes. Because my woman was screwed in this match. Yep. She was doomed to fail from the very beginning. Mm hmm. And I mean, this isn't a dig on Charlotte. This is literally like, look at the match. Look at how much offense Alexa Bliss got in on that match. And then Charlotte Flair remembered that she's Charlotte Flair and won. But I mean, uh, Charlotte's babyface on SmackDown. She's obviously going to take on the Riot Squad, which means sooner or later we're going to get Charlotte versus Ruby Riot, which is a really, it's a really interesting matchup. Like you know the whole the whole cliche styles make matches. I don't know if it'll be a good mix. I'm sure they'll both put in the effort. Ruby Riot will do her thing. Charlotte will definitely go in there and do her thing. I don't know whether they're going to match up well. Whereas on the other side of the coin, you've got, you know, the heel faction with Paige and the other two girls, who are heels, and they're beating everybody up, but one of the people they've beaten up is Alexa Bliss, who's one of the best, if not the best, heel on Raw. So does Alexa Bliss go babyface in that one instance and become not a heel? Because we're going to get Alexa Bliss versus Paige. And I'm sorry, that could main event a pay-per-view, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, absolutely. It won't. I could, uh... It won't, but I, it should. I feel like we're moving more towards that. It's not going to be one of the main four, but it's going to be a pay-per-view. Yeah. And I mean, any of them, like, fucking... Who else can I think of, but, uh... I really, I don't know why, and, and, and Guapo, I actually kind of love to get your thoughts on this. I'd mm -hmm. love to see Sonya Deville's first feud on Robbie with Bailey. Um. <laughs> Just because she's got, like, that, like, they're, they're trying to play her off as, like, the legit MMA, like, their version of Ronda Rousey type character. Mm -hmm. And just to have that, all of that attitude and whatever go up against Bailey, I just. You know, Bailey's that, you know, big, wide-eyed, bright white rabbit in the middle of the freeway. Yeah, Sonya Deville is the one that you just stay away from completely. Yeah, or she's the truck in that rabbit situation. But, uh, I mean, it was a great match. And, like, like I say, once again, and I said the same thing about Almas and, and Drew, and I'll say it here, too. Like, you know that Charlotte's not a small person. And you know that, you know, part of Bliss's gimmick is the whole, like, five feet of fury or whatever. But, like, you don't notice what the difference is between these two until they got in the ring. Like, the fact that Alexa Bliss was able to do some of the things that she did to Charlotte in this match says a lot, because, I mean, Bliss has to do it, but Charlotte also has to sell that she's being taken down by somebody this much smaller than her. Right. So, I mean, like, yeah, we, we you and I can joke around, because we're both Bliss fans, and we can say Bliss got screwed, but, like, in reality, this is probably one of the better, and I'm saying main roster, not NXT, before anybody has a heart mm -hmm. attack, but this is probably one of the best main roster women's matches we've gotten all year. Yes. And I mean, that makes sense, because you've got your two champions, which should be the two best women from your respective brands, right? I mean, throw Ember, Mo throw Ember Moon into the mix, and you've got maybe a different scenario, but it is what it is. Um, what should have been the main event? Brock Lesnar versus AJ Styles. I hated the placement and all the hype that they did before this match of saying, uh... Oh, uh, whoever has whoever uh, wins the next match needs to win two in a row if they're going to win this, uh, because it'll be all tied up and all that stuff. I'm like, well, Raw's going to win in this one. So, there was no uh, questioning about Brock Lesnar winning or losing. Yeah, because they were going to tie it up. I hated that, too. 
I still wanted yeah. to. I still wanted to believe that, like, okay, WWE had to do the logical thing to tie it up, but we all kind of depend on WWE not being logical. And I would have loved for AJ Styles to defeat Brock Lesnar, but I mean, when Brock Lesnar loses, it's going to be a title match. It's not going to be an exhibition, yes. right? But I mean, That's correct. It's but it's, also it's going to be somebody who they're going to be pushing massively. Uh, I really hope it's not Roman Reigns. Well, no, it's not just that, but, like, if if he loses, it's going to be when he loses the belt. Like, for for Brock Lesnar to lose and then disappear still with the title would have been really fucked up. Yeah. Like, AJ Styles lost, and he still has the title, but he's there defending, he's gone back to SmackDown, and he's still there representing himself, not necessarily defending the title, but at least getting himself into situations where the title's going to be defended. For Brock Lesnar to lose, keep the championship, and fuck off again would have been a bit much. The only reason I will say, and it's been said everywhere, people on YouTube are saying it, people on podcasts are saying it, whatever, the only reason this makes sense is if this was the last match, you would have sent the fans home pissed off. Because people are going to be pissed off that Brock Lesnar beat AJ Styles. And I'm not I'm not particularly pissed off that Brock won, because it's one of those, you know, we want to get into the storyline and whatnot, but... Um, yeah, of course, and I mean... But I mean, realistically, I if you... I was optimistic that it was going to be AJ, but... Yeah. But if you, if, you didn't, was Brock. if you didn't know who Brock Lesnar was, and you didn't know who AJ Styles was, and you just saw the two of them walk out to the ring, who would you think was going to win the match? Brock. Like, and I'm not, and and we've been doing this long enough, you guys that are listening to me right now, you know that I'm not saying that in a disrespectful way to AJ. I'm saying that because of that, AJ losing doesn't hurt him. And, I mean, AJ Styles is pretty fucking Teflon, too. Like, the minute AJ arrived in WWE, I think there was a, a large swell in the in the community of, like, AJ can do no wrong. Well, he can't. Like, the guy is... The guy is kind of being bred on SmackDown, anyway. Because, I mean, we know on Raw that it's it's Roman. It, it, it's, it's a fact. But, like, on SmackDown, Styles is basically their John Cena. Like, he doesn't have to be in the main event. He doesn't have to necessarily be in a title picture. He's in the title picture right now. But, like, realistically, like, if you take out John Cena, because he's part-time, like, who would you call the hood ornament of SmackDown? Uh, besides AJ? No, like, the whole Ross, like, including AJ, like, is your answer not AJ? No, my answer is AJ. Okay. Well, it, it would be AJ, and maybe in the f- near future, it would be Bobby. Yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan of Bobby Roode. There's a whole, like, you guys know I'm a big fan of Triple H. There's a whole lot of Triple H in Bobby Roode. Like, the aggressive side of Triple H and the aggressive side of Bobby Roode are so fucking ridiculously similar, but I, I'm sorry, like, Triple H still has his Shawn Michaels, and I think in this scenario, uh, you, you can put them on the same level, you can have them fighting for the title, but I think Styles is still the guy on that brand. I think when he was a heel, and he was talking about how, like, SmackDown was the house that AJ Styles built and all that sort of thing, like, it was a heel line, but he turned face... And they've sort of added legitimacy to it. Because, I mean, Bobby Roode, like I say, great guy. Shinsuke Nakamura hasn't really had his moment yet, but great guy. Owens, great heel. Sami Zayn, great tweener, babyface heel, whatever. All super talented guys. Would I give a shit if any of them became the world champion tomorrow? Absolutely not. Wouldn't throw a flag, as, as they say. But even if AJ's not the champion, even if he's not in the championship picture, he's still the guy. Like, when John Cena was full-time, and I'm saying this in a very different way, but, like, Cena didn't have to be the champion for us to know that he's the guy. And I get that same vibe, that same sort of, like, I've got the brand on my back, whether anybody's actually doing that to me or not. I, I get that from AJ Styles. 
Like, AJ Styles right. going out there to have a good match. Bobby Roode is going out there to make sure he has a good match. Do you, you get what I mean? Yes. Anyways. But, I mean, like, I, in all honesty, I would love to see this match again, like, soon. And I would put the... I don't know which one I would say is better, but I, as far as Lesnar matches go, I would put this sort of side-by-side side with Lesnar Punk. Lesnar Punk? Yeah. And, I mean, that just makes me wish that Punk was still in the company, because then we'd have AJ Styles versus CM Punk, and... That's, right? That's fucking money. Braun Strowman can be the referee, it'll be great. And then we got the men's five on five, which was the actual main event, which had the weirdest ending in the world, where Triple H defended turned, Shane, turned face and then turned heel all at once. Yeah, like fucked. Up, like he's like, not only am I gonna win, not only am I gonna destroy Triple, or not only am I gonna destroy Shane, but I'm gonna make sure nobody else can take credit for destroying Shane and eliminate fucking Kurt Angle. Um, the face-off, but and, and I, I mentioned it a second ago, the face-off between Bobby Roode and Triple H was fucking money. When they do the, like, the suck it versus the glorious and all that. Um, I will say it was one of those matches that I kind of laughed at. You know when there's stuff that happens in wrestling that you know nobody's gonna like, but it's gone so far to that nobody's gonna like it that you have to laugh because you know... Twitter and YouTube and whatever are going to blow up later. When they eliminated all the NXT guys first. When they when they eliminated fucking Rude. Shinsuke and Bobby. Shinsuke, Robbie, um, Finn, and Joe. And what you had left was Triple H, Randy Orton, John Cena, and Shane McMahon. And I'm just, and it's, and it's bad. And it, I know that this makes me an asshole. Like, I'm fully aware that this makes me an asshole. But I'm like, everybody's crying right now. Like, I'm not even going to go on Twitter right now. Because everybody's crying right now. And I'm just going to laugh. But, I mean, Joe got his stuff in. Uh, Finn Balor and John Cena going face-to-face was a lot better than I think I predicted it to be. I think I predicted that that was going to be, like, super awkward, just because Finn is so, like, quick and agile and fluid, and John Cena's athletic as fuck, don't get me wrong, but he's not he's not fluid in the ring. It's, it's, it's the same thing I say about Booker T, The Rock sometimes. They're robotic in, in, their, in their approach because they're their offense comes from such like a power point of view rather than a speed point of view. So I figured it would be awkward and John Cena versus Finn Balor is a match I want to see now. Mm-hmm. But, uh... Yeah, uh... I, I lost my train of thought there. Yeah. Train of thought off the track. Yeah. All, I just think all these matches, like, between all these guys and, you know, the, the popular wrestling opinion, where it's like, oh, there, there should be a cap, there should be a time limit, you know, Triple H should be gone, and Cena should be gone, and Orton should be gone, and realistically, Angles wrestled twice in WWE in the past ten years. Triple H wrestles about once a year. When was the last time Randy Orton had a program? John Cena's a part-timer. Um, Shane McMahon comes back to have like stuntman matches once or twice a year, and that's it. So yeah, he ragdolls. Yeah, and so if if you want to have all these you know quote unquote part timers, jam them into one match. The entire rest of the card belongs to the new talent. We really don't have anything to bitch about in the, in the long run. We re- we really don't. And when you get to the end and the match is over and Triple H is there standing there, supposed to be victorious, meanwhile Braun Strowman, who's his tag team partner, uh, is sitting there making him shit his pants. I mean, it's fucking good. Like, <laughs> well, you got tri- Triple H, the, like the, the godfather of NXT, in the ring with four of his best projects. Four... Four guys with six NXT title reigns between them. Four guys in which he he personally got signed each. 
and I mean realistically, six guys if you want to include Sammy and Kevin for their for their interference or whatever. Uh, can we also include uh, Randy in there too? Well, evolution is a mystery. Well, that and you know, technically he was a part of Triple H's uh thing, so. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think of that, actually, but yeah. And I mean, like, nobody remembers it, but Braun Strowman was technically a product of NXT as well, because he was in the, the Rosebuds. Rosebud. The Rosebud <laughs> program. Uh, remember, remember Adam Rose? No, uh, remember <laughs> Adam Rose. Actually, yes, because I went to Walmart yesterday, uh, and... As I do when I go to Walmart, I go by the toy section just because uh, I collect the pop vinyl figures. Oh, yeah. And right behind me was like the WWE section with the kid, uh, kids' uh, Universal title belts oh, and SmackDown tag title belts and all these different things. And then there's the you got a bunch, didn't and, you? You got a huh? bunch. Did, you got a bunch of belts, didn't you? No, I, I, I bought a uh, which called a three pack. Uh, pop vinyl thing that cost me twenty seven dollars, but it's Star Wars, but so it's okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, oh uh, yeah, Star Wars is a thing. I forgot. Well, yes, it's a thing, and I'm a nerd. Well, anyway, well, well, m- m- movie wise, we're all focused on other things right now. Yes, there's that too. <laughs> but you know, Star Wars coming out. Oh, I know. Two weeks. I can't fucking wait. Little, anyway. little, little hintity hint, hint, hint for the people waiting for our extra bonus video. The uh, the new Star Wars comes out about a week before my birthday. Yes. So watch watch your subscription boxes. Watch it. It's going to be there. It's gonna In be the good. doobly-doo. Uh, train of thought. There it is. Um... Guapo's, was... bu- Guapo's book in Braun Strowman versus Alexa Bliss in the main event. No, Alexa Bliss is going to be booked inside my bedroom. Whoa, Ayo. whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. That's not PG. I, no, it's not PG, and there's nothing going to be PG about it. Alrighty. Uh, the Walmart. <laughs> in, in the in the uh, WWE uh, action figures, there was a two-pack. It was Adam Rose and the Bunny. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm not. I Fuck. don't know why. But Fuck, I got Adam um, Rose and the Bunny. I got. I almost, WB. I almost bought it just for the pure fact that it was Adam Rose and the Bunny. Fucking, I got uh, 2K18. I might go back and get it actually. 2K18. You want to know how many people have put up like community creations of Adam Rose and the Bunny as like tag team champions? I was one of them. Tag team champions. very strange. Anyway, with, with that, I think we can officially like put the stamp on it. We've run out of topics to talk about post-Survivor Series, but I mean, all in all, pretty damn good weekend between fucking... between War Games, Survivor Series, Punisher dropping on Netflix, uh, Justice, Justice, Le- Justice League dropping in the theater... Uh, pretty damn good weekend, all in all, for everything landing on that weekend. I mean, the the new women on Raw and SmackDown are the main excitement point right now. Like, they're what I'm looking forward to on the main shows. And, I mean, you guys know me. I don't even review the main shows right now. So, that's, that's something. I don't know. And, uh, uh, the gals and Anderson uh, selling shit backstage have been pretty great for me. Jesus Christ. I hear those guys were big ones. Anyways, um, with that, I'm just going to say, everybody watching right now, check out the annotation at the top of this video screen. Toss your questions into the Q&A for January. That Q&A will be going up before the Royal Rumble. Stay tuned in December, which, I mean, it's technically been December for 58 minutes now. Stay tuned later in December for myself, Christian and Guapo and our fantasy WrestleMania off the cuff video that's coming in a couple of weeks. I will be back in January 
with NXT reviews, with pay-per-view previews, with stuff like this, with the Q&As, and all that sort of thing. So until we get to the rest of the special WrestleMania video, uh, Guapo, tell them where to find you. You can find me on Twitter at Guapo underscore 504. Uh, I don't really tweet, but when I do, it's pretty fucking funny. So, uh, yeah. Or I'm just asking Spaz where the fuck the uh, pickums are. Indeed. Uh, um, unfortunately, we lost Kristen, the uh, our roving reporter, uh, reporting live from the gas station. But uh, you yes. can find her at Black Cat Feline, YouTube.com slash Black Cat Feline, if you guys ever decide to do anything on YouTube again. You guys know where to find me, or you wouldn't be watching this video right now. But anyways, I've been Spaz, he's been Guapo, Kristen has been the ghost of Kristen. We are your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, me and these guys are tagging out. Bye. Adios.